All right, guys, today we are going to take this right here. I'm gonna teach you how to go from here to here. So this is flattened and nested of my um, thing. And so this is using a new tool in Fusion 360. It's called a range. Um, I'm gonna show you uh, how to get it, uh, how to put it on um, your thing, uh, then how to use it because you have to be in a different um, area than you normally design things in. And I'm gonna do it with a pretty complicated file in some ways that I guarantee will pretty much cover anything you can be doing. I'm gonna assume like a little bit of competence with uh, Fusion 360, like you kinda know how to start a sketch and like copy stuff, but I'm gonna show some of that too. I'm gonna try to make this, not to insult your intelligence, but as dumbed down as possible. And I'm gonna try to do it fairly quickly as well, so. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna look at here is um, how to actually make sure you have it. So the first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that um, the job, if you click on the uh, job status, I believe it's that one, right? Yeah, if you look on the, if you click on the job status, um, it, if it has a number on it, you need you have an update. You need to click on that update and then restart Fusion 360 and come back to this window. Um, so then, if you do that, you'll go to uh, your name, and then you'll go to your preferences, and then it'll open this window right here. Um, and then if you go down to preview features, this shows you uh, stuff that Fusion 360 is working on um, that you can apply to your thing. So you need to, the two things you need to have turned on are this arrange feature right here and then um, this is what is like I think where Fusion 360 is gonna go into full nesting. I think this is them starting it and giving you some of the uh, power of it to start with. Um, so you need to turn that one on and then you need to also in order to use it you need to turn on this manufacturing model or working model. Um, so this right here is well you'll see. So turn both those on, and then you're going to hit apply, and then you're going to hit OK, and then you're going to close this window. Um, and then you might have to restart Fusion 360 again. I think you're going to need to restart Fusion 360 again. I'm pretty sure. You can try it without, but you can. I'm pretty sure you need to do that. I did this this morning, and so I'm telling you it all why it's fresh in my mind. So I'm going to show it. So just bear that in mind. Anyway, so then now you're here. This is um, where you would be making your model. Um, so you would either, I'm assuming you have a model you're trying to flatten down, arrange, um, and then uh, machine, however you're going to machine it, water jet, um, plasma cutter, uh, I'm using a CNC router. Um, so yeah, so you have this and somehow you've made it um, with sketches and push pull and sculpting or whatever. You have these parts, right? So now what you're going to do is you're going to go in design, you're going to go into manufacture. Okay, so now that you're in uh, manufacturing, um, which is going to take a long time after you do this, it's just something I've noticed, it recomputes this at almost every single time, just so you know. <laughs> um, anyway. You're going to want to, so you're going to want to go to setup and then create manufacturing model. Um, and that's going to generate one right here. Uh, I'm not going to click it because I've already done it, but you click that and then you have this, which I think is actually a pretty cool feature. It allows you essentially take your model and then do whatever kind of changes you want to do to it in order to um, machine it. So you don't have to have that on your like master copy, all these weird things in there. Uh, you can just do it in the machining setup, but I think it just keeps things cleaner and a lot nicer and you don't have to move your uh, history bar back and forth. So anyway, um, right click on that and then do edit manufacturing model um, and that'll open it up because right now you, it, you're in machining worlds and now you're back into modeling worlds. So if you look up here at the top, you see you have um, like all of your, uh, I don't know, your things for modeling um, and including you can make sketches um, and do all that in here. So how did I do this? So, um, so I hate to do this to you, but my computer is being crazy weird and there's these blue guys that are just going to be blue the entire time because it's like stuck. I'm trying to record this and um, at the same time, I'm trying to do something that's very com compute intensive, so I'm having some glitches. Anyway, um, I copy and paste uh, everything in here. So this is my master file right here. It's called Pelvis. I'm making an exoskeleton. So that is the main file right there. And then I make a, I make a new body, and I do that by coming down and create um, new component. Um, and then that makes this, and then so this is outside of this. And then I come through here and. I don't know how your guys' stuff is, but my stuff, if I turn this one back on, um, you can see it's grayed out because let me activate the... Uh, so if I activate this one, um, you can s yeah, you can see that this is my uh, main file. It looks a little weird for some reason. I'm not sure why that is. Um, but anyway, this is this is my main guy. It's probably because I have all... It literally turns on everything, including all your constructs and everything like that. But I go into these components 
And then, um, and if you don't have your bodies built into components, you just need to copy over each component. But if you copy over each component, you won't be able to do it. So you need to go into the bodies like I just did, hit um, shift, grab them all, and then uh, right click them. If there's some you don't want to leave, you don't have to bring them. Um, I brought them and then I put them in a different file once I got them over there. So then I, you just copy um, or you uh, hit control C, which you just saw right there. Oh no, you didn't see it. So you go control C. Bam, there it is, now you can see it, how cool is that? All right, hit Control C, and then you would come down to um, your component, which is your build component. I, I like to label this one build, and I just forgot to do that. We can do it right now. Um, build, there we go. So uh, I just labeled that one build, and um, then you would just come down here, and you right click and either paste, um, or you can hit Control V, which I'm not going to do, because I'm not actually trying to do it right now, because I've already done it. Here, I can just do it out here. There you go, it doesn't go anywhere though, Control V. I don't think it went anywhere. Oh, shit, I might have just did it. <laughs> yeah, I just did it. All right, Control-Z, undo. All right, so anyway, um, turn this off because you don't need to see your original um, thing anymore. At, so you need to do that for every single component, which I have a lot in there, and I'm doing a complicated thing, so you can see this can work with something that you're probably is, is, is more um, simple. <laughs> this is really complicated um, because of the sheer number of parts. Um, I'm not saying you're not a good engineer and you have an engineer and complicated shit. Um, anyway, you come in here, and then what I did is I cleaned up some of the components. And remember, those blue guys are just going to be floating there. Um, actually, funny enough, they're one of the things that I removed. Um, so those are my removed components right there. So I took out some components, and then I put them in. Um, I copied them into other things. So I have some parts that I'm going to build on a lathe that I'm not going to CNC machine. So I took those, and I put them in this file right here that I labeled lathe. Um, and then I have some 3D com printed components in here that I think I just removed. Yeah, these guys down here are just removed. So you just right click on them and hit remove. Um, or you can delete them or whatever you want to do. Um, so I cleaned up that a little bit. Um, but you don't have to do You can do it at the end too. Um, or you can just leave them there and then turn them off. There's lots of ways to do that. But um, then I went here and you actually see as I go to the end here that I actually missed some. Um, I think I just turned them off. So I, those I just turned off. I mean, there's, there's lots of ways to do that. But here is how I got, now I got to this right here. So now what I'm going to show you, oh, I forgot to tell you uh, two things first. I may have gone too far ahead. What you need to do then is you need to take all your bodies, you need to right click them and um, convert them into components. They have to be components for you to be able to do this. You can't do them as bodies. So um, these are all actual uh, components now. And then they are, it's super confusing because they rename them body. Um, which Fusion 360 doesn't do this in the normal thing, but it's a glitch, I guess, in this environment. So they take the name over. Super confusing, but these are actually components named bodies. I know it's really confusing. Um, but then they need to be in component form. So again, if you worked all in components, um, this would be easier. Um, it doesn't work for me because I need to like motion link things together and stuff, so I need them to be bodies. But then to machine them, I need them to be components so I convert them. Um, and it does... I haven't seen how if I update the file yet, if this is going to come over. You always get these yellow errors on um, copy-paste. So it may be something I have to redo. Fortunately, it's not that hard to do, and I can just do it again if I need to. Um, if I make, Eventually, I'm going to lock in the files, and I'm not going to change them. So once I get that, then I can just do it all again at the very end and then machine it. So um, anyway, let's get to why you came here for the arrange thing. Um, so now I have to, uh, before I can do that, I have to put... Um, this on multiple plates. So it has to be, um, so what I did is I set up and I made a custom sketch um, of my material that I was going to machine this out of. Um, so I have plates coming um, that are of a certain thickness and then I extended that um, off the edges and I have put around, let me just show you the flat stock. So so I machined, so I, I did this in another file and then I imported it into this file. And uh, you can do that by going into this right here, which is opening this thing, and then you find the file you want, and you hit insert into current design, and it just put it in. Um, so I did that. I think I did that in the, I don't know if you can, I don't know if I did it in this environment or the other environment. I think I did it in the other one. But essentially what I did is I modeled up my um, uh, flat stock, and then I added extra 0.3 inches to the ends of, um, so you can see it here. You can see the outline of it anyway. Um, there's circles, which is how I'm bolting it down, so I can't hit those. So I left those in there, and then I extended the, um, the lip all the way around by uh, 0.3 inches. And that's so that my quarter inch end mill can get around everything. Um, because when we do the arrange, um, what I did is I you come up here and um, I pinned it to my toolbar because I was using it. Um, but you can come down here and if you turn it on right, it'll be right here. It'll be called arrange. Um, so it'll be under uh, modify. 
um, down and you'll have a range. And if you want to pin it to your toolbar, you click the little guy right there, the little three dots. Anyway, I did that and then I made a bunch of them. So I went over to create and uh, did pattern and then rectangular pattern. And then I made a bunch of them. And then what I did is I just started a different sketch on top of each of them. You can't pick multiple things. You can do them if you do just straight lines, it seems to be able to get it. But if you need to do something complicated like this, you have to do it as multiple sketches. Um, which means you have to select each part of the range for the part where you want it to go. So you can't collect all of them and then collect, select all the sketches. It won't work. You have to do them individually. So you have to be a little bit cognizant about what things will fit together well. So you still have a little bit on you, it's just a little bit easier than doing them all completely manually, which is what I did before. I laid every single component. Now you have to do is click the components you want organized in the sheet that you want them in. So you come here, you click arrange, or actually let's, uh, let's do it this way. So I'm gonna come, I'm gonna come all the way forward and then um, we'll go down to modify, arrange, which is where yours is gonna be. Again, mine's right there. Um, and then what you do is you come in and you select them. So I've already laid them down, but this is actually going to make it easier for me to show you how to select them. So I have certain geometries that I need up because I need the end mill to be able to reach them. So you come over here and you click on the face, and that arrow will be pointing up in the direction you want it to be pointed up. Um, so then you come in here and you do them all, and um, I already have mine set up the right way, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do these guys, and I'm going to do this one because I like this one. Um, and But I'm not going to select the rest of them. Um, so this is under... You can't see this window, sorry. Um, your object's there, and then you need to hit your um, plane sketch right there. And then you click on the sketch you wanted to. And what I can do, I can put it on this one really quick, and then I'll just undo it. It's going to take the ones that I selected and then arrange them over there. Um, and then if, it, uh, if it's too big, if you pick something, if I put something really large in there too, um, it would just not do anything. It'll think for a long time, and then it'll just, you, you'll get an error message, but it goes away really quick, so you may miss it. But it essentially just won't do anything. It takes a while. For this part, um, you can see it's still loading and I'm recording video right now, but it'll be loading for a minute here. Oh, there it goes. It literally just popped over. Awesome. Um, so there it is. Those are arranged there now. And then if you got an error, um, you can either hit OK or you can select these. If you're going to reselect things and you're going to reselect a bunch of things, exit out on this so that you can, so it's not completely, because it'll try to update every time you click on something. So yeah, that's kind of it right there. If you hit OK, they stay there, maybe. Yes, they stayed there. So Command Z, um, and they are back to where they were. So that's really how it is. The things are still blue. They're still there. I told you they're going to be there the entire time, and they're super confusing, I'm sure. But um, yeah, there it is, and that's how you lay those those things down. I think it's a really neat feature, um, and it made my life a lot easier. It literally came at the perfect time where I was just dreading having to do it all again because I changed my design. Um, so this thing came at exactly the right time for me because I had designed an exoskeleton and laid everything down and then um, ordered the material, but then there's still things that need to be adjusted and made on it. Um, so now all I literally nested that thing you did, but I laid and moved um, with the move tool every single piece. Um, and then I got it pretty accurate. I tried using like an open source thing online and it didn't work that well. Um, it actually worked terribly. I was way more efficient than it was. Um, just so you know, uh, I tested it. The pelvis that I did, um, it was. It took four sheets to do it when I did it. It took four sheets to do it when Fusion 360 did it using the Arrange tool. Um, so it's just as efficient as I am, but it saves me a ton of energy and a ton of work. Um, it's still not perfect. It would be so easy if you could just click every single part and then click this and then put the number of things that you need on the flat stock and be like, I want these to fit in eight pieces and let it do it all together. That would be awesome. And I'm sure that's going to come on their nesting um, when they do nesting. But this at least makes it a little bit better to me. And it's like literally like this was a gift from God. It's like here um, it is because the material for this exoskeleton right here, which I'm sure you're looking at, it's on screen. Um, but uh, I'll show it to you. If you watch this far in the video, you may be kind of interested. Um, I literally ordered the aluminum. The, or, the aluminum to build this out of is here. It arrived today. <laughs> And um, I'm going to use a CNC router that I bought, a very cheap machine that I built from scratch, um, to machine this uh, using helical carbide, which is a really great carbide for um, aluminum. And I've already done prototype. Um, and then I'm going to machine this out and then TIG weld it together. Um, in order to do that, I got to flatten everything back out. Um, it was gonna, I was just. It took me three days to do it last time. And I was like, I was just not looking forward to having to do that again. 
And the fact that this tool came is so awesome. Um, it also cleans up all my files so I can delete a bunch of stuff out and then redo them and other things, which just cleans up my, my files and makes them work more easily. Um, really, really awesome. I love Fusion 360. Um, I'm a huge fan of it. I love that they open source this. I literally don't pay for this, but I'm a wizard at it. And I, like, I will pay for it when I have a business that's making enough money. I'm happy to pay for this. But they give it to you for free if you're making under enough, uh, underneath a certain amount of money. Um, if you're a small business that's not making any money or you're a hobbyist, you can get this software for free. And they give you cool stuff like this, which is like cutting edge shit too. And every now and then they give you like really cutting edge shit like on how to do like generative design and stuff. Um, so it's really, really cool, really cool stuff. And uh, yeah, I'm just super happy that this came when it did. Um, if you listen to all this shit, uh, you can subscribe to my channel. I'm going to build an Iron Man suit. I would really like it. And also, if you'd like this video, um, smash the button for me. It just helps me out in YouTube. Um, which I'm trying to do. So I love you guys. Bye.